the audience, my name is Leopold König and I'm happy to speak in front of you. I'm the CEO of Custom Cells, a German cell manufacturer, and I would like to speak with you about the customizing of lithium ion battery cells for electric aviation. When we were founding in 2012 the company, basically nobody wanted to hear about um, the electrification of cars. Nowadays, all major um, car manufacturers have a broad portfolio of electric cars. Now, I am pretty sure that the same will happen to the aviation field and especially that short distance um, flying will getting more common uh, by electric vertical and take um, vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. So this is um, what I'm going to speak about, how we are customizing these ion battery cells for electric VTOL. What you need basically is a quite sophisticated um, production environment and this is what we have in southern Germany in tubing. In tubing we can um, manufacture exactly tailored to the customer's application cells in a series production. I would like to give you basically overview um, about our two companies. On the on the right here, you, this one, you can see um, the facility in Itzehoe, which is the center for prototyping um, for the automotive industry, but also we do manufacture there our electrodes. And this facility here on the left is uh, in tubing and is a serious production for aviation. We have a vertical integration concept, um, which is starting with the raw materials and ending with the recycling. But we do focus on, um, on the value chain, which we are really good in, and that is um, choosing the right materials and combining it with best engineering to a product and scaling it up in short time. So um, with our um, cooperation partners here on the left, um, we, we, um, they provide raw materials to us and um, also de develop them exactly to our needs. And with Elite, the next one, is um, we hold shares on Eli. They are located in Minster, and um, they can mix blends of electrolytes exactly for what we need in our application. And Itzehoe is an R&D and te technology center, electrode manufacturer. Tubing is focusing the high quality electric flying series cells. After that, we um, can build and um, prototype battery systems. Um, also focusing on lightweight. Our um, clients are integrated, so the VTOL manufacturer, and on the end, we rely on cooperation partners and for the recycling um, that we do, don't, um, and won't do in house. Here again, you can see the market focus. So we, on one hand, have the prototyping and innovation-driven part, um, which is um, focusing, especially the um, yeah, sports cars and um, prototype cars. And on the right side for tubing and custom cells battery systems, um, the electric aviation field, which is focusing on from prototype to yeah, the very high quality series product. For equipment, um, we also have some partners we think they are really good in uh, what they're doing. So for coders, we um, use equipment from Matisse in Switzerland. Extrusion comes from Coparion. The plant manufacturer for um, cell production is MANS, and the electric characterization we do with Keysight equipment. We have right now um, around 100 people, so we grew from 2 to 100 in uh, like 7 years. And one of our um, important partners, as also here you can see it, um, is P3, um, the P3 group, which is, um, yeah, is is a shareholder of our company and a leading engineering consulting company for automotive um, electrification. So if you're going for an um, application in electric flying, you won't be able um, to yeah, fulfill the needs to fly a few hundred kilometers safe, safely and um, quite often with a standard cell for an electric bike or for a notebook and so on. So you need to really tailor the cell on the application. Also the flight behavior is different depending on the 
E V tow. And what you need is a redundancy, so you need enough fan and battery system string strings to reach the final destination, even with a ma major failure, which basically needs to be excluded. And uh, you need to fulfill the expectations for airworthiness, which is similar to the conventional aviation. So no emergency landings, nothing is acceptable like this. You need to um, build a system which allows an ordinary flight time for short distances between like 40 minutes and one and a half hours, depending on the veto. And this, that means you need to have energy density starting from minimum 230 watt hours per kilogram. For the life expectancy, um, which is one of the cost drivers of the system, is minimum 1,500 cycles at 80% death of discharge. And the cost per flight should be similar to a street cap. And um, very, it's important to mention it's not about the, the, um, yeah, the the initial, initial purchase price of the VTOL, but it's a total cost of ownership ship for the um, for the um, company which are running these these VTOL. And transparency and quality is a very important matter, and I think it's also a complete new approach. I will explain later to you. Um, we plan to fulfill the um, some of the expectations of ISO 9000. 100 and build up a completely transparent value chain with the option to track all information and also make it public to the to the client. We um, implement real-time monitoring, so we always want to know what is going on with the cells, with the battery system, and with the EV talk. So what we are doing is um, that we follow a uh, mass customization concept instead of a mass production concept. Um, we firstly analyze the client application. Um, for that, we need the, the um, power profile and the power consumption over the time. So we're starting here with a, with a takeoff phase. We have uh, the flying phase and here the landing phase. It's just schematic. And the other requirements we also um, make need to take care of the redundancy, the hours in a system and cell performance, life expectancy, cost per flight, transparency quality, and real-time monitoring. And this, uh, when, we, when we have reached a, a profile, we tailor the cell exactly um, to the needs of, of the client application with a technology improvement phase. So we're starting basically with a TRL3 uh, cell or TRL5, and we need up to 12 months normally um, to reach a serious cell level, which is really ready then for um, serious production. And we do it that we, yeah, that we um, do it by trial and error, basically that we are um, changing the materials, we're changing the processes, improving the recipes and turning the cycle un until uh, we reached what we need. And here you can see what's necessary, necessary basically uh, to develop a cell like this, you need knowledge and experience. You need new innovative approaches, be open for it, and also try it out. Um, you need a high development speed and um, need to be able to rely on external um, support also and cell simulations, um, institutional work. And of course, at the end, the main matter is trial and error. And after that, um, you will gain a serious production cell or which is ready for serious production so we need to transfer it then in, in the, into the production. Here's a, a picture how we develop one electrode from the TR, um, TRL3 level to a TRL9 level uh, within around five months and you can see that, that we changed here um, some um, active materials. Here we changed a little bit the process and um, active materials, active material content. Here we adopted the um, flight, um, not the flight, the charge and discharge current, and reached finally the needed um, 1,200 cycles. When it comes to safety and performance, it's important to think about the ex active material and the whole recipe. It's starting uh, with a cathode material for us and there you always have a trade-off between good energy densities and loss of safety. So if we reach out then for an NCM622 material, we can uh, then source 
from worldwide or European sources and have there here in Europe basically minimum five different options. Of course, these materials are not all suiting to the, um, all binders or all solvents or the, the carbon black. So you always need to bring the whole system together to analyze um, what is really working and what not. And we have uh, on stock right now over 16 different cathode active materials and we also know how to handle them so we can build in this short time a good set. For the anode material, we um, plan always to maintain a high safety, high energy density and meanwhile a good cycling rate. And um, if we go for example for silicon, there's a spelling mistake inside, um, we um, can choose from worldwide manufacturers. There are a lot of startups, but also um, um, yeah, companies which are a long time in business. Some materials are good, some are not. And um, like this, we can build a cell with a high energy density and a good cycling rate. 50, 50 different active materials are currently on stock. For the cathode mixing, um, we can use different kind of equipment. We have extrusion machine, we have dissolvers, we have dry mixes, and um, if we go for, for example, water-based um, NMC 62 recipe, um, we would process it on a, our Coparian extruder in our facility. Here you can see how, how it's uh, running. And uh, the advantage of the extrusion is, of course, the process speed on one hand, the, that you run it um, with, a, you know, with, um, with a higher throughput and that you can also um, increase the solid content, you, you reduce the environmental harm um, by um, having no, no um, organic solvents inside the recipe. For anode mixing, we can choose between um, different sizes of dissolvers, 20 liters, um, 50 liters or 200 liters, depending on the development level of the electrode um, or the recipe. And if we go, for example, for the 200 liters, we can manufacture them also water-based silicon carbon recipe here on a mixture like this. Um, the electrode manufacturing process, we have um, two different um, lines installed in, in ITSO, one cathode line, one anode line, and can choose between doctor blade process or slot die process. The doctor blade um, is good if you want to um, change um, fast formats or the viscosity, and for the slot die we can use if we um, want to reach a higher uniformity and throughput. This is how um, a typical um, recipe here looks like, for example, 97% um, of active material content, solvent-free, a loading of 5 milliampere hours per square centimeter, 8 microns of copper foil, um, 10 microns of aluminum foil, porosity of 47%. Okay, on this picture, you can see the um, production running in, in Itzehoe. And we just installed a new coating line and a black room Tubing is, um, as I mentioned before, a series cell manufacturing facility. And what we have there is that we run, run um, some process quite different than a typical um, or standard cell production to enhance the quality of the cell. It's beginning with the, um, the laser ablation. And after that, we have a laser cutting of the electrode, vacuum drying lamination and separator laser cutting, an active stacking process, heat pressing, tap welding, deep drawing and packaging, um, the filling process, formatting, testing, aging, degassing, end of line test, and of course we can also influence the environment and the production. So beginning with the, elect um, the electrode laser ablation, you can see here on the right, we, um, 
we basically scratch the surface free of, of the material with a with a laser and um, like this you get a window like this which is optimizing on one hand the energy density but also uh, reduces any weaknesses inside of the tap you normally have after can rendering and because we can leave just the tap area away and later weld here on the spot um, our tap in the window and like this we get here yeah, maximize the amount of active material inside the cell here on the right side you can see a microscopic picture and um, you can see that even the edges are very very precise after ablation we are going for um, we're going for the electrode laser cutting then the electrode laser cutting um, gives the um, the cell basically the electrode the final format and um, the, the positive thing about laser cutting is that you don't have anywhere like a uh, similar to a notching tool um, and that you always have the same cut on every electrode depending not depending that um, it, there are changes inside the tool and um, we can bring also different shapes into to the electrode so you don't need to stay with a rectangle you can also get a, a curved design of, of the cell after that, um, the electrode is um, are going to be uh, dried in a vacuum, and then we go for the lamination um, lamination process. And the next step, um, lamination and separator laser cutting. So here you can see the laminated electrode, and um, it's between two layers of separator, and will be connected under heat and pressure. So you get a complete stable mechanical design. Um, which is helping to improve the cell quality also over the um, over the life cycles. This is the next step, um, the active stacking, and we have a very precise stacking machine, which is correcting um, the positioning of the electrode, which is a single layer uh, stacking, and when it's um, when the when when the electrode is put down. On the workpiece carrier so like this we in, in comparison to um, passive stacking we get a very very high um, accuracy of plus minus um, 0 0.1 millimeter you can see it here um, it's um, here approved with, with a computer tomographic scan on, on the right side you see uh, competitor cell you see the shifting electrodes inside the stack so this means a high risk for thermal runaway but also reduces life expectancy and for sure this is one of the um, most precise stacking machines on the market and it's manufactured by our partner the next step then after that we go into the heat pressing machine the heat pressing um, after we already laminated here um, um, the, the, the electrode it's Gonna um, going to be um, pressed with a with a high pressure and heat inside the stack, so you get a brick-like um, cell on the end, which is mechanically really strong. And um, we, um, if you ever touched before a standard power shell, which is only taped, you can see that it's that you can bend it. That there's a lot of flexibility inside it. This comes from shifting of the electrodes and um, it's not good for for the for the safety and also for the quality of the cell so that's why we're using the heat pressing and after that um, the tap welding begins the deep drawing the filling and the formatting these are mostly standard processes and um, very important to mention is maybe the testing the testing um, we rely on equipment of keysight and keysight developed a self-discharge measurement method which allows to measure um, the cell quality if it's a good cell or a bad cell here yeah, um, just um, um, in less than one hour and we do it that we have a potential start and put a constant voltage on on the cell and, and level it and then we um, apply a current and checking in how much uh, current goes in and how much goes out of the cell and this takes only yeah, less than one hour 
and the standard um, open current voltage checkup takes basically one month because you need to wait until you can really see a change in the open open current voltage. This allows us to yeah, find out if we have a um, defective production, but also we don't send out any um, bad cells. Of course, we can also influence the environment. It's important that we avoid any mistake in the production. We have a dry room with a minus 60 degrees dew point, and the whole facility is running in an ISO 6 clean room environment. To ensure the safety um, of, of electric VTOLs, um, we developed a traceability concept which reaches out from raw materials to the complete cell. Uh, we get the batch information, we get um, recipes inside um, of the database, the process parameters, metrology data, environmental data, lab data, operator information, like which people have been at which time um, on the um, yeah, active on the on the process and all this uh, information we bring into a data lake huge collection of the um, of, of information and um, from the data lake again we we get um, out the information into our battery intelligence software and this software is making this information usable and um, with this usable information we build a virtual um, battery, a battery twin. So we have a real life battery and a virtual one and um, it provides information on a cloud server to our clients at 24 hours, um, seven days a week. And um, with the um, real flight data, then um, we get a feedback into our software um, and can then give predictions on um, on what is going on in the future with a with a eVTOL, but also improve our own production and recipes. And this is a full transparency approach, which is completely new in the industry and helps to bring safety to. The on the line and tubing, we are not able only to build um, rectangular cells. This is important to mention. We can also manufacture our shaped terrace cells um, as it's here shown in a draft on the right side. So we have more freedom in all dimensions of the cell and fit it exactly to the client's application. Um, with the best um, technology content, we also reap the best performance to fit in the application. The laser-based processes lead to the possibility to manufacture this odd-shaped cells and um, of course a high stacking precision leads on one hand to the higher life expectation and um, general good quality of the cell and high safety. Lamination and heat pressing leads to a, a brick-like mechanical stability, which is good for um, yeah, application with a high vibration profile. The traceability concept ensures full transparency for clients at any time and a forecasting of the journey of life and the equipment concept allows manufacturing also of lower cell quantities. The quality standards allow simple implementation into complex applications. Thanks a lot for listening to me. I hope you enjoyed um, the small preview of our facilities in ITSO and Tübingen. If you have any questions, please contact us directly. Goodbye.